Hi, my name is Thiago Passos, and today we're going to talk about Swega. Swega is an open API specification that helps developers to talk between different kinds of applications. Right, so today we're going to create a brand new .NET Core application using this path template with Angular, and we're going to generate um, the whole API specification and then generate the client that the Angular app is going to use. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to use here today is mostly the command line. But you can do all that using Visual Studio 2017, all right? So let's start with .NET New Angular to create our brand new um, .NET Core application with Angular already set up. And then an npm install. All right, so now that we finished downloading the whole internet with npm, we can go and run the application just to see if it's working all right. All right, so it's it's running on port 5000, so let's give that a try. Okay, so now I have a, a brand new uh, .NET Core with Angular using the Spa template. Right, so let's start now with adding a package called nswag. Okay, so that's what's going to generate the uh, swag specification for my application. Okay, so I'm going to stop that. And what I'm going to do is .NET add package. And the name of the package is nswag ASP.NET Core. So it was added. I can go now and .NET restore just to make sure everything was restored just fine. Cool. And I'm gonna open with Visual Studio Code. Okay. Cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the startup, and I need to add a few things here. First, I need to add add Swagger. All right. Uh, but for that to be recognized, I need to add here using swagger and swag and using and swag ASP.NET Core. All right. Okay, so the second bit I need to do is in here. In the configure uh, in the, the configure method, I need to add use Swagger UI three, uh, and I'm gonna use that just so I can have a nice UI as well uh, instead of only the specification. Okay, I'm gonna give the the, the assembly of the application I'm running right now. And I'm gonna just use the default um, swagger settings. Okay, nothing, nothing special. Okay, so there is. Um, if you were not using this part template, that would be enough. Okay, so with that, you would have swagger set up, and you would be able to go to the UI and see the nice uh, swagger UI. Okay. Uh, but because we're using the spa template, it has this thing called um, map spa fallback route. So if it doesn't find in the main um, MVC routes, it's going to fall back to the spa. All right, so it's going to fall back to uh, the home index, so the uh, front end can deal with the routing. Okay, uh, but in this case, I don't want the the spa fallback to trigger when I'm going to forward slash swagger, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to remove this part of the code from here. Okay, so I need to add this map when. And in here, what I'm going to do is, if the request starts with a swagger, I want the fallback not to be triggered, all right? So I'm going to trigger the fallback whenever the request doesn't start with swagger. 
Okay, so I'm gonna get this request, I'm gonna get the path, and I'm gonna get the value. Okay, so if the value doesn't start with swagger, that's where I'm going to do something. Alright, so that's value starts with, and here I'm gonna use the builder. Alright, so that's where the magic is, the, the magic is gonna come from. Right, builder dot use MVC. Okay, so I'm gonna give the routes again. And I'm just gonna paste that piece of code that I um, copied early on. Alright, so that's pretty much what we need to do here. So let's go back to Commander and let's do a .NET, .NET run. Okay, so now my application is running and you can see here if I refresh, it's going to be the same thing, right? Nothing has changed um, in the Angular side. And what I can do now here is I can go to Swagger, all right? And when I do that, it launches the Swagger, Swagger UI. And you can see that here, uh, it's got the Swagger specification, which is this JSON file. So and swag generates uh, this specification, right? And in the UI, which is pretty cool, you can actually go and test uh, all the endpoints that you have in your application. So for example, for this um, spa uh, template sample application, I can go to these weather forecasts and I can try it out. Okay, so I can execute and that's gonna bring me um, some cities, temperatures and, and dates as it comes from the server. Okay, it's pretty cool. All right, so now what I need to do here so I can hook it up uh, with Angular, I need to copy this URL, okay? So if I go to this URL here, that's the whole specification. So you can, if, if, you, if you read the spe specification, you can see all the paths that you have uh, in your API and how that positions um, itself okay even even the, the models are coming and stuff like that with the types of each of the properties which is pretty cool okay so now we need to use this one here so we can generate a angular um, client okay so I'm gonna go back here to the main application um, and what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna open this and swag studio um, was created by nswag. Um, I'm gonna create a new one here and I'm going to paste that URL. Okay, my application is running so the nswag studio will be able to, to reach that URL and I can have a look on what it comes back here. All right, so if I generate output, it's gonna go and read the, the specification, which is pretty much what we had in the browser. But now what we need to do is we need to um, check this TypeScript client. So we can go here uh, and we can generate out the output just so we can see how how it creates. So it creates the whole TypeScript so I can use, okay. But now I want to change the TypeScript. So I want to change a few things here so I can use in my Angular application. First I want, I want to use the TypeScript version 2.0 and in the template, what I want to do is I want to do Angular instead. You can see there are a few other options that you can do, but in this case, I'm going to use Angular. There are a few things that you can configure that, and if you go to the NSWAG, NSWAG website, um, they will give you a, bun a bunch of options to configure um, the client the way you want. Okay. Um, for us here, we always call that object that talks to the server uh, we call it a service, okay? So instead of having the, the, the classes in, in TypeScript being called client, I want it to be called service, okay? So I'm gonna change to this one in here, okay? And then all the way to the bottom, I will find this output uh, file path, okay? So I'm gonna set that, okay? So I'm going to go to my repository that I just created, Swagger Angular, client app, 
I'm going to go to the app folder. I'm going to create a new folder here called core. And I'm going to create a new folder called services. Okay. I'm going to go to that folder and I'm going to call um, the file as API um, service right, client generated. Okay, I'm just going to call generated just so no one goes to this file and tries to update this file manually because if someone does that uh, further on, someone will end up regenerating the file because you make some change to your API and then this someone will lose all the, those changes, right? So if you do want to make change to your client generated, what you need to do is you need to make change to the end swag um, configuration. So when you generate, it generates with all those changes. Okay, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, I'm gonna save that. So here it shows the full path. Um, but it actually saves in the file as a relative path. Okay, so if I go here and save this NSWAG configuration, I'm gonna save in, save in the same folder. So I'm gonna go one level up and I'm gonna save here. Okay, I'm gonna call it NSWAG.json, which is the default name for the NSWAG um, configuration file. Okay, so I'm going to save that and I'm gonna generate the file. Okay, so it generated, it uh, took one second to do it. And now what I can do is I can go to Visual Studio Code, I can go to my client app, app, you can see I've got a folder called core and then service, then API client generated. Okay, so it created all that for me and I can just use it now, which is pretty cool. Okay, but before we go there, there is an optional step that you might take, right? Um, so I'm just going to open another another instance of the commander so I don't stop the application. I'm going to go to my source folder, repos, demo, swag, uh, angular. Okay. All right, so what I want to do here, so if you want to run um, this end swag generator uh, via the command line or in a, in a build step, okay? Um, you can't just fire up um, in Swag Studio and do that, okay? So you want that to be done in the command line, okay? So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do in Swag run where I have my in Swag.json configuration, okay? In order to do that though, you have to install, um, so I would install that globally in Swag, okay? So by doing that, you now have the option to run and swag in the command line, okay? I'm not gonna install that right now because I already uh, have that. What I can do here is and swag run. Okay, so that does the exactly same thing that the swag studio does, but via the command line, okay? So if I go here and I delete that, just so we can see that happening, I'll be able to run that again and you see that the file was generated again, okay? Cool, so now that I have this, this generated file, how, how do I use it? Okay, so let's go now to the fetch data. The fetch data um, out of all these components here is the only one that talks to the server, okay? In this spa, um, template. So, but the way it does is it uses the HP here, it injects the base URL, and then it calls HP from here, which um, it's pretty ugly if you do that, okay? Especially in the component, all right? So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm going to remove all that. I don't want any of that, okay? I don't want any of that right now. And the cool thing is, I don't even need that because that's also generated um, by NSWAG, okay? I can remove all that. And I'm gonna come back to that in a second because before I use those services, I need to add this service um, to my module, all right? So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna set providers. And what I need to do is sample data service. Okay, Visual Code is, um, is pretty cool, okay? So it's helping me out here 
um, to find that service. So it, when I do that, you see that it added um, an import here to get this API client generated. So I can use the simple data service. Okay, so I'm done with that. And now what I need to do here in the constructor, I'm gonna bring that service, okay? So it's sample data service. I didn't want to call that um, lowercase sample data service. Again, as you should you uh, code is helping me out here. So it added this one in here. And the other thing I'm gonna add, so I've got the sample data service, but also I want the weather forecast. Okay. So now I have both the model and the service. Okay, I'm just gonna make a slight change here so it doesn't complain. And now I need to bring the data, okay? So I'm gonna talk to the sample data service, get the forecasts, and I'm going to subscribe, okay? And when I do that, now I can get the response. Okay, which the response is typed. So it's weather forecast. And now I can go to forecast. This forecast is equal to response. It might complain because this value here is nullable. Um, and this one is not. So let's change that to nullable as well, shall we? Okay, so that's pretty much it. So let's see now if it's going to run. So it already made all the changes, but I'm gonna stop just so you can see that's actually working. And I'm going to, to run, .NET run. Okay, so now my application is running. I can go to, con to counter here just to, to test the, the Angular application. That's all good. That's part of this part template. And I can now go to fetch data. All right. So you, you saw that I, I didn't e even um, change anything in the, in the UI. Okay, I only changed um, the component to get, instead of um, doing that ugly thing that's using the HP um, with a, um, a string that's then pointing and things like that. I'm just using all um, typed using TypeScript and the uh, generated uh, service. Okay, so that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Cheers.